Hi, teacher. Hello, Claudia. How are you? I'm good. And you? I'm doing okay. Thank you. Are you in your house? Yes, in my house. Okay. What part of the house are you in? In the living room. In the living room. Yes. Okay. And how many people are there in your house? Uh, about uh, six people. Six people. Yes. Okay. And where do you live again, Claudia? I live in Santa Tecla. Oh, what part? In Santa Monica. Oh, Santa Monica. All right, that's good. Yes. I have worked in different institutions in Santa Tecla. Where? Where um, you... I worked in ITCA, La Britannica, mm, uh, okay. Santa Inés, Educlase, different places. Mm, okay. Yep. My cuñada? My sister-in-law? My sister-in-law. Uh, she studied in the ITCA. Oh. What does she study there? I think engineer. Or oh, a technical in engineer. Yes. Okay, that's good. Yes. Hello, Nelly and Ivan. Hi, teacher. Hello. How are you today? Hello. I'm fine. I'm fine. Hi, thank you. Okay, how was your day? My day was cool. Did you stay home all day? Yes. And you, Ivan? Uh, today is my short day. In the morning work, in the evening go to the supermarket. Oh, good. Where do you live again, Ivan? Santana. Oh, Santana. Yeah, Santana. It, are the streets empty in Santana? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't see uh, many people walking and, and doing things? No, no more people in the, in the streets. Okay. And are there police uh, <laughs> checkpoints in different places? Yeah. And more more police in in my neighbor uh -huh. in the in the in the next street okay two or three police and do they ask you where you're going no okay so they're only bringing um safety On, to the population more only for cars okay for cars, for people in cars. Okay. All right. It, what part of Santana do you live in? I live near to the Universidad de Salvador. Okay. All right. Good, good. Hello, Pamela. Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Good, good. All right, so today is May 19th, Tuesday. Uh, what's the year? 2020. 2020, or if you prefer, you can say 2020. The two options are good. Okay, so in every class, we start with, uh, with a review of the previous uh, session. So let's start by talking about yes. Do you remember the activities we did yesterday? Yes. Okay, what were the topics? The topic was superlative and comparative. Good. In English, we have short adjectives and we have long adjectives. You know, it's very different than Spanish because in Spanish we say más caro, más barato, más bonita, más lejos. We always say 
mas. English is different. Um, we have short adjectives and we have long adjectives. How many syllables in the short adjectives? Two syllables, maybe. Okay, with short adjectives, there is only one syllable. Uh, can you give me examples of short adjectives? Small, small, small big, big, short, fast, fast. Okay. What is the comparative of fast? Faster. Uh, Faster. The small. Smaller. 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 Uh, Smaller. Cheaper. Cheaper. Uh -huh. And Cheaper. near. Near. What is the comparative of near? Closer. Okay, when we say near, how many syllables are there? Two syllables on, on near. There are two syllables on near. Okay, when you say near, there is only one. Near. Near. So according to the rule we studied uh, before, how are you supposed to compare the word near? So according to the rule, what is the comparative of near? Closer or nearer? Nearer or the nearest. Okay. So let's say you are in a place that you don't know that well. You ask people, excuse me, where is the nearest bank? Where is the nearest gas station? Where is the nearest supermarket? El más cercano. Now, so when the, when the adjective is short, you will use comparative with ER. And how do you make the superlative form? You it's use it more than or, no the it that's it for comparative uh and comparative is using EST. EST, EST exactly uh, EST but remember that you need to include the definite article D the, or the D. D or the using D or the okay. okay what's the difference between D and the What's the difference in terms of pronunciation? When do you say D and when do you say D? Uh -huh. We use we, we use D when. Uh huh. When do we use D? When is when is starting with uh vocal? How you say vocal? Vowel. A vowel. A vowel. 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 And, and when it's starting from a consonant, we use the. Okay, good. So when the next sound is a consonant, you say the. When the next when the next sound is a vowel, you will say d. So you will say the fastest, the cheapest, the easiest, right? Okay, so is that clear? Yes, it's clear. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me uh, copy. Okay. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll do it later. All right. Um, what happens when the when the adjective is long? Long adjectives they have two syllables or more. Uh, how do you make the comparative of a long adjective? They begin with the word more before yes. the adjective. Exactly. So you will say more expensive, more dangerous, more um, strict, for example. Now, what is the superlative of long adjectives? Most, the word most. Most, uh -huh. the most. The most, the most, yes. 
So the most beautiful girl, the most expensive car, the most dangerous country, uh, the most extravagant, uh, you name it. So if the adjective has two syllables or more and you want to use superlative form, you will have to use the most. Are there any questions about that? No, teacher. No. No? Okay. No. All right. Um, do you remember the function of modal auxiliaries? Modal auxiliaries. Uh -huh. Modal auxiliaries. Uh -huh. Let me give you a tip. An example of a modal auxiliary is should. Oh, should, would, and could. Uh -huh. Those are modals. You have more, but those three are fine. Should, could, may, might, must. So um, what is the function of, of, of models? What is their function? What do they do? So if you tell me I have a stomach ache, uh, what do you think I'm going to tell you? Can you repeat, please? If, if, if I tell you, or you tell me, it doesn't matter. If I tell you I have a stomach ache, what is going to be your suggestion? You should, you should take a pill. You should take a pill. You should check with a doctor. You should take, you, you should go to a clinic. That is your opinion. Um, what if something, what is the model that you use when something is mandatory? Should. Well. Should. Should is for suggestions or advice, but when something is mandatory, will you have to? Okay, have to is one option, but what is the one that is more serious than have to? Could. You could. could is a possibility. Okay, imagine there is a car accident. <laughs> And then you tell your, your friend, hey, we must call the police. We must call the police. Must. must. How do you spell must? M-U-S-T. M-U-S-T. M-U-S-T, must. Yes. So, um, what is the one or the is ones? That, is that a model auxiliary to most? Yes, yeah, yeah. We have, uh, I will show you an image after, after we finish talking uh, about this in this block. Um, we have many. And something you need to keep in mind, every model gives an, a specific meaning to the verb. So let me, uh, where's the chat? Okay. So I, I should go. I must go. I could go. Now, do you see the three examples that I wrote in the chat? Yes. yes. In the chat in the platform. Okay. I should go. I must go. I could go. What is the meaning of this of the first sentence? I should go. Yo debería ir. It's a suggestion. So it's a suggestion and you're saying it's a good idea if I go. I should go. Debería de ir. What is the meaning of the second one? I must go. Um, an obligation? It's mandatory. It's mandatory, it's an obligation. So let's say you receive a paper from a judge and he says, Francisco, we want to see you Tuesday at night in the morning for a 
traffic, whatever. So I say to myself, I must go. What happens if you don't go from uh, when, when the court is calling you? What's the result? Um, I show. There are going to be consequences, legal consequences. Right. There are going to be legal consequences. And if you don't go when they call you, you can go to jail. So I must go is... I must go means that it's mandatory that you go. And then you have, I could go. What is could? Uh -huh. Who is a possibility? Right. So in the first example, I should go. I'm saying to myself, it's a good idea if I go. The second example, I must go. It's mandatory. And with the third one, I could go, but I, I'm going to watch television better. So it's possible that I can go. So as you can see, we are using exactly the same verb, but with a different model. And every sentence has a complete different message from one another. Are we okay there? Are, do we have any questions? No, oh, it's okay. No. All right. Okay, so let me what, show you. What? Yeah. Uh, the word would, what is expressing? Okay, good question. Does anybody know would? Would is like good? Like. There is an example. It's I would go, but I have to work. What is the function of would? I would tell you, but it's confidential. I would help you, but I don't have time. Uh -huh. So how do you say I would go in Spanish? Me gustaría ir. Yo iría, pero... Iría. Te diría, te ayudaría. It's hypothetical. So, would, what is the function of would? It makes the verb, it puts the word in a hypothetical situation. So, when I tell you, I would go, but I have to work, that means that I'm not going. Going is hypothetical. Now, like I told you yesterday, and like I told you earlier today, uh, some of these models, they have double function, and would has double function too. But uh, the usage that we have about would is hypothetical. That is like the most, uh, uh, the most common. Mm. Um, Thank you. All right. Uh, anybody else has any other questions or comments? No? No. All right. So let me show you a document. Do you see that document? Yes. yes. Okay. Did we see this yesterday? No. No. no, okay. So this document is divided in three parts. The first part, it explains what the function is. The part in the middle tells you the name of the modal verb. And at the end, it gives you examples. So if you want to talk about abilities with the first one, you will use can or could. Now, can expresses abilities in present. Could expresses abilities in the past. Now, how do you say no he podido ir? No he podido ir in English. I couldn't go. Couldn't go. 
Ok, that is, no pude ir, pero no he podido ir. A woman go. Oh. Ok, just, just, just remember the following. Can is for present, could is for past. I could not go. That is simple past too. So if you want to say poder in other tenses that is not present or past, you have to use able to. Able to. Have you heard about able to before? Yes. Let me yes. put it in the WhatsApp chat, able to. Able to. So how do you say no he podido ir? That is present perfect. What's the auxiliary we use for present perfect? The form there. What is it? How do you say no ha llamado él? He doesn't go. Doesn't he or, or hasn't? Hasn't. He hasn't. 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 Now, do you remember how many tenses we have in English? Twelve. Twelve. Twelve is correct. Twelve. Now, once again, if you're going to use can, it's because you're using simple present. If you're going to use could, it's because you're using simple past. Any other tense that you want to use poder, you have to use able to, which is the one that I just sent you to the to the WhatsApp chat. So if I want to say, no he podido ir, I would have to say, I haven't been able to go. I haven't been able to go. How do you say, voy a poder ir? Remember, you, voy a poder, yeah. uh -huh, I, voy a, I could go. I could go, go is podría I ir. could go. That is podría ir, pero voy a poder ir. May. I will be able to exactly. go. Exactly, I will be able to go. Remember, can is for present, could is for past. Any other tense, you have to use able to. So if I want to use it in future and say, voy a poder ir, I will say, I will be able to go. If I want to say, no pude ir, which tense is that? Simple past. Simple past. past. And how would you say that, no pude ir? I couldn't, couldn't have go. been able. I couldn't go. It's simple. Go. I couldn't go. So, this is for present, this is for past. Anything else, you have to use able to. Now, if we go to the next uh, part, if you want to ask for permission, you use can, you use could, and you use may. Yeah. Look at the examples. Can I sit in that chair, please? Could I open the window? May I borrow your dictionary? In the three examples, in the three questions, you're asking for permission. Look at number three. If you're giving suggestions or advice, the only option that you have is should. Sure. Examples, you should visit your dentist at least twice a year, or you should try to lose weight. Next one, if it's an obligation, you have must and have to have to which one is more serious is it have to or must 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 very must. good so look at the examples i must memorize all of these rules about tenses or you have to take off your shoes before you get into the mosque so the two examples they tell you that it's mandatory to do the things that you mentioned there 
in the last group, the four options that you have there, they express possibilities. It looks nice, but it might be very expensive. Richard may be coming to see us tomorrow. So the two examples are only possibilities. Uh, besides have to, all the modal verbs, the form of the verb is in base form. David can speak, could speak, can I sit, could I open, may I borrow. You should visit, you should try. Whenever you're using um, these models right here, the form of the verb is always base form. Are there any questions there? Uh, why, why did you say that have to is an exception? Uh, because when you said I have to take off. So have needs the preposition to have to all the others they don't they don't need it except have uh -huh. so uh, i have a stomach cake i have to take an aspirin i have to call doctor okay anybody else has any other questions or comments Yeah, can you repeat uh, how do we say no he podido ir y he podido ir? Okay, uh, if you want to, let me see it. Where's the chat? My goodness. More chat. Okay. I have been able to go that is positive i have been able to go he podido ir if the information is negative i haven't been able to go for positive can we use will to uh sure uh if because the ones that i just wrote no he podido ir or if it's positive, he podido ir. If you want to use it in future, you will say, voy a poder ir. So you will say, I will be able to go. Okay. okay. What is the negative uh, for future? What's the negative of will? Will not. Uh -huh. And what is the contraction? Uh -huh. The contraction of will not, won't. Won't. Okay. Won't. So how do you say, no voy a poder ir? I won't be able to go. Good. I won't be able to go. If it's positive, you will say, I will be able to go. Any other questions or comments? No? No. No. All right, so let's go here. Let's see, where's this one? Okay, do you see the image? Yes. Okay. Yes. What are the options that we have in the in the in this uh, rectangle? What are the options that we have? Can, may, must, should, couldn't, ought to, might, will. Okay, good. Any questions about those models? What is ought to? Does anybody know the meaning of ought to? 
Ought to is between have to and must. Something that is necessary to do, Pamela. So if you say, you know what? I don't feel that well. So I tell you, well, I think you ought to go to bed early today. We can uh, include in the group of obligation? Uh, yes, it can be included uh, for obligation, yes. Any other questions or comments? No? No. no. All right, so I'm going to assign you to work in pairs, breakout rooms, so you guys do this exercise. Have 11 people, so I'm going to make five pairs. Create. I'm going to send you the image. Um, right now. Can you see the image clearly? Hey. Hello, Andy and Cecilia. Hello, Peter. Hello. How are you today? Fine. Very good. good. Did you receive the image in your cell phone? Oh, it's right there, yeah. it's better. Okay. Yes, in the rep. Yes, all right, good. Thank you. All right, good. Hi. Upside, upside, yeah. up. right? Number one, you, you. tell me much of you. You must tell me. You the must. Truth. Um, I think it's will. We will. Will. Alright, on T -shirt. time or yes, sir. Uh, we can use a uh, will or must in the number three. Yes. We must. Uh yeah, sure. Uh, we should arrive on time. Uh, we will arrive on time. We may arrive on time. You can use different ones. Um, okay. But uh, uh, in some cases, in exercises, they ask you to use one for each sentence. But in a real conversation, you can use uh, more than one option. Okay, and so let me correct if we say or if we use we must we arrive on time or else we will be in trouble or we will arrive on time. Yes. No, because will is for future, right? It, but it still makes sense. It still makes sense. Oh, yeah, makes it makes sense. sense. Okay. So, so it's possible that you use it. Okay, let's continue. All right. Okay. All right. okay. Um, I, I should, yes. I couldn't, 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 uh, think I should, yeah, see, it's a, tiene más lógica. Which number? Number two, number teacher. Two. What is the answer for number two? The number two, um, I couldn't find my shoes anywhere. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Thanks. All right. Veamos la número tres. He, he should the basketball. We, uh, number two. Number 
to I find the shoes anywhere. I couldn't find the shoes anywhere. Good. I couldn't. Okay. Couldn't. I couldn't find my. Which number are you doing right now? Six. Uh -huh. What was the answer for number five? Um, will. Will you let will me know the let... time? That's okay. possible. Sure. We we can use would too, right? Yes. Would you let me know the time? Sure. Yes, you can. Um, I have a question. Is yes. Number four. Uh huh. I'm not sure. Uh, I said he should shoot the basketball at the rim, but I think that's not right. Um, it, it makes sense. Um, in the exercise, they don't tell you exactly that um, you have to use one model for each sentence. So what I'm saying is in a real conversation, you could use more options um, like you say, he should shoot the basketball at the rim. He will shoot the basketball at the rim. He couldn't shoot the basketball at the rim because it's broken. Uh, or if they're playing for money, let's say, you will say, look, he must shoot the basketball at the rim. So you can use different options and all of them would make sense. The, the word rim means borde. Is uh, that correct? El aro. El aro. Oh, okay. Yes. So like I said, he can shoot their basketball at the rim. He should. He will. He must. It depends what you're saying in the sentence. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the okay, same. La última, para la última, how to we how to prepare for the big exam? Yo debería preparar para el gran examen. Yeah. Entonces solo Mike nos falta. Now remember that uh, for this exercise in particular, you can use more than one model in each sentence oh, okay so okay. for like for number eight you can say um i'm sorry but we couldn't prepare for the big exam can you move the exam for saturday um or you can say now that we are not working we can prepare for the big exam or if the exam will determine if you stay in a school or not you say we must prepare for the big exam so you can use different options. Okay. In the in, in the number six teacher. Uh-huh. They, so they, I, I don't know. They may not be trustworthy enough. They, they, they might not. They mm -hmm. might not be trustworthy enough. Okay. So may might or let's say your supervisor is putting condition. He said, look, they must, uh, no, they, they, they can be, no, what number are we doing? Trustworthy enough. Yeah, so they must, no, they uh -huh. might not be trustworthy enough. Okay. So you, use, you have different options to um, complete each sentence. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank all you. right, all right. Yeah, Lorena. Yes. Entonces, quizás ellos um, no deberían... Which number are you doing? Number, number six. six, teacher. Uh-huh. 
um, like I was telling your friends before, you could use uh, different models in each sentence and they still make sense. So it doesn't have to be like one in particular because uh, the, the exercise is very flexible. Um, maybe we use uh, O2. Uh, which number are you doing again? Num Sorry. Number six. Number six. Uh, they ought to know. Um, okay. How do you say despedir a alguien de algún trabajo? Despedir. Uh, fire. Like fuego. Fire. fire. Okay. So imagine that they fire people in your office and you don't know why. So you say, well, they must not be trustworthy enough. No han de ser lo suficientemente confiable. confiable. Yes, that can be one. Or you can say, they may not be trustworthy enough. Pueda que no sea. They mm -hmm. might not be. So you can say, may, might, must. They will. They will not be trustworthy enough. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can use may, different options. May and um, might, uh, can we use? Sure, sure. Okay. Yes. Thanks, thanks. All right. Okay. Census ambas. Okay. We have finished for the third time. So let's do it again. You finished uh, all, all of them again? You finished yes. them already? All right, let's return to the main session. Okay. All right, did everybody have the time to finish the eight exercises? The eight sentences? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are there any questions or comments? No. Okay. So like I was telling you before, when you use models, remember that each model gives you, um, gives an, a specific meaning and a specific function to the main verb. So in this exercise in particular, they are being very flexible. So you could use um, more than one option in um, the sentences in the exercise. Um, any questions or comments? No? No. No questions. All right, no, so no now questions. let's go with a little bit that is a little bit more demanding, a little bit, not that much. Um, do you see the image? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Nine to ten. This right here. Okay, so in this case, the exercise comes a little bit different. Uh, you have three different possibilities for each one. So the first thing you need to do is understand um, the sentence itself, and then you decide which of the three options is the, is the best option to, for, for the answer. Teacher? Yes. But, it's a little, but the image is a little blurry. Okay, um, I think that, um, hold on. This cell phone, yeah, it is blurry. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, give me a second. What happened to your cell phone, Tisha? Uh, I broke it. I broke it. And it was a very nice cell phone that I have had. And, um, but I broke it. Which model leave? It was, uh, 
as uh, what is the the model from China? Huawei. 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 Yeah. So uh, uh, it was very damaged, and now I'm using the one that we have here for emergencies. And um, let's see this here. <laughs> How people broke the phones? How how did you break? What? How people broke a, a, a phone? Yeah, yeah. So, what about the image that I sent you right now? Okay, check. Thank you, T-shirt. Is it accepted? It's better. it's better, huh? Yeah. Okay. So I will assign you to work in pairs. Um, let's see. What are we? We're right here. So here we go. Great groups. And here we go. Hi, Nelly. That can't be Jason. He's on a mission to Mars. Okay. We see what needs forbidden. Okay. What needs forbidden? Prohibido. Prohibido. Okay. Prohibited. Okay. Next one. That. B. I check it for three times. Provecho, teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. In 200 years, people. Uh, uh, that. That will. That will cross. That will be the correct answer. Check it three times. That will be okay. the correct. That will. Ajá, eso sería porque es como que eso será lo correcto o es lo correcto. Sí. Okay, démosle la número cuatro. Ajá. Okay. 200 years, people. That's a problem with her connection. Who is your partner, Melvin? Nelly, but Nelly has a problem with her oh. connection. Oh, okay. So let me see if I can assign you to another group. Okay, don't worry. All right. Mm -hmm. 
no, queer, call, call, no, queer uniform, full on Friday because our hats are full with. Mm. I think that is we didn't have to wear. We didn't. Uh, we shouldn't wear just we shouldn't <laughs> okay yes Let me check number six babes um, with babies can't for me it's can't babies can't read comic books Yes, may, um, babies can't read, read comics books. Sounds logical, right? Yes. Okay. His doctor told him that the world, that the lose weight, <laughs> it's for me, lose weight, <laughs> or he will become very... Ill. Ill. Oh. Ill. Number, uh, number five. Mm -hmm. We have problems. Okay. <laughs> to resolve. <laughs> uh, the answer for number five is the last one. You shouldn't have made dessert for the party. We had already ordered three cakes. Um, and that is the main reason why right now we're doing models in a general way, in a general form. Because tomorrow we're going to okay. be talking about this particular structure, how you use models in past tense. So you shouldn't have made, no hubieras hecho dessert for the party. How do you say dessert in Spanish? Desorden? No, dessert. Dessert. This one here. Dejado. No, no hubieras hecho. Man, how do you say dessert? Um, like fruits, cakes. Postre. Uh, postres, right, thank you. No hubieras hecho postre para la fiesta. Ya habíamos ordenado tres cakes. So, uh, before we start talking about uh, models in past, you need to have a very clear idea of how you use models in a very general way. Now, once you have a, a once you understand how you use models in a general form, then you can go and start using them in, in the past tense as well. So tomorrow when I explain how we use models in past, you would understand this 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 answer. Okay, okay we need it. We need it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the explanation yeah. comes tomorrow. Okay, teacher, thanks. All right. Ok, aprobamos el decreto 26. Oh. You guys finished with the exercise? Yes, good yes, thing. All right, let's go back. Ok. See you guys. Ladies and gentlemen. Are there any questions related with the last exercise? No. No questions? Nobody has any questions? Okay, so if you guys don't have questions, uh, thank you again for making the time, the space, and we continue tomorrow at the same place and same time. You guys have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Sleep well. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.